The snow globe had a pink base. Inside, tiny snowflakes swirled around tiny New York things, the Empire State Building, the Statue of Liberty, a yellow taxi cab. I bought it when I was rushing through JFK to catch my flight home after a whirlwind 48-hour work trip in Manhattan. There had been traffic and I was running late. Not enough time to stand in the Starbucks line for a sorely needed latte, but just enough to grab the one thing I couldn't go home without. The Hudson News next to my departure gate had other, more appropriate souvenirs for my three-and-a-half-year-old daughter. Teddy bears wearing Lady Liberty crowns, pink t-shirts with cartoon big apples splashed across the front. But I wanted her to have the snow globe. It was all of her favorite things, delicate and sparkly and beautiful. A miniature version of my favorite city, exactly the size of the palm of my hand. It seemed like the perfect bridge between my old life as a New York writer and my new one as an LA mom. However impractical it was, it fulfilled a silent, secret wish that my daughter would someday know both versions of me. She loved it just as much as I knew she would. It's delicate, I whispered as she held it tight in both hands and dipped it upside down again and again to watch the swirling flakes. I know, she whispered back. I'll keep it safe, Mommy, I promise. I love it so much. The snow globe moved around our house. Sometimes Eva wanted it to live on her bookshelf. Sometimes she carried it to my desk so we can both love it, Mommy. Sometimes I'd find it in the kitchen next to her latest bunch of wildflowers. I reminded her constantly to be careful with it, that it was fragile, made of glass, that if she was too rough with her snow globe, it would break. For months, it was her favorite thing in the world. She was so gentle with her glass treasure that after a while, I stopped reminding her to be careful. And then one morning, I heard a loud, cr loud crash while I was upstairs getting dressed. Eva, what was that? I called down. Silence. Then, it was just something, Mom. More silence. And then hysterics. I flew down the stairs two at a time, but it was too late. There it was, her New York snow globe, in pieces on the floor. Eva was inconsolable, kneeling above it as, if, as though if she stayed there and cried hard enough, it would piece itself together and float back into her palms. My first instinct was to reprimand her. How many times had I told her to be careful? Shouldn't I remind her that things are just things and tell her she should be lucky to be healthy with a roof over her head and plenty of other toys to play with? But as she sobbed, my mind flashed back to another moment, just weeks before, when I'd sobbed because I'd broken something precious to me, something irreplaceable, something I should have been more careful with. On a family vacation, somewhere between the sand and the sunblock and the constant toddler chasing, I'd lost my wedding ring, the most precious object I'd ever owned. Eva had crawled into my lap that day and wrapped her skinny arms tight around my neck and said, I'm sorry, Mommy. It was a really beautiful ring. Now she stared at me distraught and afraid, waiting for my angry words. Sorrow transformed her face into one I barely recognized. The broken snow globe lay on the floor between us. I stared back at her at those wide blue eyes drowning with tears. I swallowed the I told you so's and the you need to be more careful's. I pulled her into my lap and held her tight and I wrapped my arms around her neck. I know you didn't mean to break it, I said into her sweet dark hair. I just want it back, she cried, her body shuddering. She looked at the shards of glass, the fake bits of snow swimming in a pool of water on the living room floor and broke down again. I want to hold it again. Please, Mommy, I want to hold it again. All the versions of me came together in that moment. The kid I'd been who had broken special things too. The writer who uses words to make sense of joy and pain. And the mom whose heart broke seeing my daughter's tears. Sweet baby girl, I know just how it feels to want something back that badly. That desperate desire to reverse time until the, it's the moment right before the bad thing happened, to have all the broken pieces be back together again. Sometimes in life we lose what we love most, and it hurts like hell, even if it was our fault, even if we should have been more careful. Today, it was a snow globe, but Sometimes things in life that won't seem so fragile will still shatter. Sometimes those things won't be things at all. They'll be friendships or love affairs or dreams. And in those after moments when we're on our knees wishing we could go back in time and undo what we've done, the best thing we can hope for is that someone will wrap their arms around us and hold on tight 
and help us pick up the broken pieces and understand. Thank you.